Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. So today we are having a look at the Wasteland Wealth Exchange, which is the pawn shop prefab that is currently on the Atomic Shop. I had mixed feelings about this one because it's kind of just a big square, but uh, I think this build's come out quite well. It's uh, an interesting spot. So, because this is quite decoration heavy, I should point out that for the main part of the build stage of this, I'm just going to focus on some key areas rather than the whole thing, otherwise we'd be here for a very, very long time. So, with that in mind, let's jump in and have a look at where we are on the map, first and foremost. Okay, so I've gone for another Morgantown-based build for this one, and my major reason for that being that this is... it's a pre-war sort of structure in its appearance, so we're just near Mama Dolce's here. Basically, you fast travel there and then do a 180 and head straight down the hill in front of it, and the spot's just on the right. And yeah, I felt with this being a pre-war structure and sort of a finished building, we ought to be near a town. So this is our finished building. It does look quite cool. They've uh, managed to make it slightly more interesting than some of the concrete floors, which is quite fun. So one of the big things about this is it is a big open square, as you can see. So I wanted to divide it into two halves, so the shop was kind of the front half and back half was um, a bit more functional living quarters type thing. I actually went for the living quarters in the back corridor and then um, just used the back half as a crafting space, which worked out quite well. So I'm using a combination of junk walls here to divide this off. I actually swapped that middle one out because the, the legs on the back kind of caused more problems than anything. They stick out too far, but uh, dealt with that one later. Also, this is not even remotely straight, as we'll see in a minute, so uh, that is one of the <laughs> challenges with this. You could probably use conduits to create a guideline if you wanted to, but uh, yeah, I didn't think of that until after the fact. So what I had in mind here was creating a kind of improvised doorway or archway on this side, and basically stretching something across that gap. I spent ages on this, and it was kind of a nightmare, but uh, eventually that Pittsburgh sign decided it was willing to sit in place, so I was quite grateful for that. We finally found a way to create a kind of um, upper door frame. So just going to drop this pier sign on the top there. Nice. And uh, basically makes it a bit more interesting. So jumping on to the next section, just going to throw together a nice and quick kind of counter setup here. Uh, these ones are Slocum's Joe bars. There's a whole bunch of different styles out there and available. This is a fairly simple one. I was going to just kind of take it around the corner and come straight back along with the snapping there. But with this one, it leaves a gap when you do that. The Old West one here from the Tipsy Tom set. That doesn't have that problem, but uh, this one unfortunately does. So we'll have to sort of do this by hand. So we'll turn the snapping off in just a second and get this to sit nice and snugly just up against that first one. The trick is to get them to sit close enough together that they're in contact, but they're not um, sort of overlapped so you don't get the flickering, which is requires a little bit of trial and error and uh, fine tuning to avoid. But uh, you get the general idea of what we're going for there. On to the other side, I'm going to get some shelves in. I'm basically just sort of eyeballing this to sort of see what I'm working with. So we're going to use these big ones first. And this is really where you can start to see just how wonky that um, central dividing wall I put in is. Because, um, yeah, straight this is not. <laughs> but I came back and tweaked it. It turned out actually moving it without having to disassembling it was surprisingly easy in the end. Worked out quite well. And I took that central piece out to say the central uh, junk wall and replaced it with the... Uh, a couple of other bits and pieces that are a bit thinner, so that worked quite nicely. And we'll get those in and get a kind of vibe for what I'm working with there. It's going to need a little bit of fine tuning, but uh, get the general idea. I had thought originally to use this double-sided shelf in the centre, but uh, it's just too wide, really. There's not enough room to move around it. So I uh, decided the way to attend to this was to just use something slightly smaller. So we went for these rustic, uh, rough shelves here. Um, and actually the contrast works quite nicely, it makes it look a little bit more scrappy, improvised wasteland vibe. Because uh, this is supposed to look like a pawn shop after all. So I've decided to put some uh, decorations up on the back here, put some uh, weapon racks in. These came together quite nicely, and I think I've done this before somewhere, but uh, quite happy with the results. Incidentally, you can sort of see there, I put a whole load of stuff over the front windows. Ended up changing my mind on that later, which is why I've not uh, shown that, because it just looks Messy in a bad way, as opposed to messy in a good way. <laughs> so, the snapping on these weapon racks are actually really quite handy for this one. Turns out it was way too far over to the left with that for the way I wanted this to look, but the easy fix is we'll just figure out where I want it there. Let me stick these four in. She's one of the small ones to create the gap between. And the whole lot just came over in one go. That was really easy. Great. And 
now to make it look secure we'll just get a couple of these metal window bars and just put them over the front. I have a feeling these came in a Halloween set quite a while back by the way, I've not mentioned that in ages but they're really really good. Keep an eye out for those, they're definitely worth having one of the several Halloween sets. So we're going to use a little technique here that a lot of you probably know, some of you might not. Um, I have a separate video on this if you want a more detailed look but we are going to do some merging because we need to decorate these shelves if this place is to look like a pawn shop. And as we are aware it is quite a faff to do this. So because we can't place things on individual shelves we're just going to start with the top one. Now this thing is way too chunky for the shelves and so is that one. So we use the foot logger because that will fit on the shelves. Start at the top here, pick some bits and pieces. Yeah, well, Blue Ridge toy truck, just get um, a random mishmash of stuff that will go on here. Just create that right vibe. The, uh, the Goldie Vault Boy thing there is actually a little bit too tall unfortunately. There's a couple of things I actually didn't realise were a bit too tall initially, but we'll have to come back and change that. So simple enough to do, you just uh, replace them and they pop straight back up to the top shelf. But for now, get the last couple of bits and pieces on here. Turned out I wasn't too happy with this thing, it's just a bit too chunky and just didn't sit on the shelf right. So I ended up swapping out for porcelain doll, because, you know, why wouldn't you pick something so creepy? Now we just pick it up, put it back down again on the pressure plate. And to make that pressure plate work, the reason I connected the wire up there was just because the pressure plate needs to be depressed in order for the glitch to work. But um, this, there's a number of ways to do that, but connecting the wire is the fastest, easiest and most reliable to do it. So uh, that's what I did. There we go. Having swapped out a couple of those things so there's nothing too tall now, it looks just about right. And we can go ahead and put a whole load more stuff on the shelf above and repeat the procedure and the whole lot will just drop down another level. Like that. So... With the shelves decorated up, we just put a few bits and pieces on the front before we move it inside. As I say, if you want a more sort of detailed and closer look at this, I will link up in the top right corner of the video a uh, link to the sort of full tutorial I did on the merge glitch, which has got a much more detailed view of it. But yeah, all in all, this is a handy technique that I use here and there. I try not to overdo it because it's quite time consuming. Um, and obviously the more little bits and pieces you put around, the more it's going to sort of hit your frame rates. But yeah, on the whole, it works quite nicely. We now have a thoroughly decorated shelf for our pawn shop. Drop that one in by the window there. And I've only got four more shelves to go. <laughs> Yay! Fun times. Get that positioned right in the middle because I want to line up the centre of the window. There we go. Looking good. So, last thing I want to show you before we head on to the tour is in the back corridor here, the back door to the place. Because of where I've put this particular prefab, it's kind of too far up at the back in particular. The drop there is annoying, and I did try to work out a way to get stairs in, but it was a lot of hassle and just didn't look very good. The collision box is a bit weird by the back stair. So I decided to just board up this door and then uh, use this back corridor as a living space. So I'm trying to get the cooking stove into the door and I want it to sink back in um, and sit nice and flush so the pipes are on the other side of the boards, basically. This is basically why I didn't show you the initial job of me boarding it up because I'm going to have to tear everything down in order to push this cooking stove a little further back because uh, unfortunately everything is just blocking it right now. I was hoping flame Flamethrower might uh, solve that problem. Unfortunately, it did not. Head around the back. Let's just pull these off and move them out of the way for now. There we go. That uh, chalkboard ended up being more hassle than it was worth. Although I think that may have had more to do with the uh, the cooking station rather than anything else. But let's drag this stove in. And with it being in the doorway, we can sink it back a little bit further and a little bit more easily. Which is a useful trick when you're building sort of regular houses using the normal building pieces as well, as opposed to prefabs. There we go. The door will now clip through, no problem. And we can use that as part of the barricade in a minute. So, I'm going to destroy that cooking station now it's in place. Repair the door. Run back around. Now we can start putting the boards back in. But I'm having one major issue here, which is where the horizontal pipes are at the bottom, where the sort of the, the thickest part of the pipes are down there. For some reason, it just doesn't want to clip through there. There's a bit too much going on, I guess. So, move the boards a bit further up to the top and uh, just use the door at the bottom, which will uh, solve the problem. I've had to take the door off to get the boards in, unfortunately, but... Uh, you know, put things in, take them out, trial and error, so on and so forth. That's basically the way these uh, scrappy builds go anyway. This is still not going to play ball, so we'll get rid of it. 
So now I just drop the door in and then lock it and we should have a nice sealed gap there. Looking good. So, let's just repair that, run back around and see how it looks from the other side. And on that note, I shall head off, finish the decoration and see you in the tour in just a moment. And here we go. Wasteland Wealth Exchange Pawn Shop. So, as I said, I tried to put a lot of boards and stuff over the front window because I felt it needed to be, well, secure and tougher if it's going to be a trading post, which it basically is, in the wasteland, because otherwise it's going to come under fire and stuff. But using the, the other bits and pieces and wall decorations just didn't look right, so I ended up putting the chain link fence across the front and it looks much better. And did some extra posters onto the side because there's a little bit of stuff here and there on the side walls. Quite a lot of detail on this, to be fair. But... um there are also kind of large blank stretches on the side and since as as I had the budget I thought it'd be fun to throw some posters up and just make it look a little busier. Put a parking meter out front because it kind of makes sense, people are probably going to park out there. We are by a road after all, which is one of the reasons I picked the spot. Added a few extra bits of defence because, as I say, you've got a trading post in the wasteland you make yourself a target really, as much as you uh, make yourself an opportunity. I do quite like the pawn shop side on the side there. It's quite fun, and uh, the way this whole thing lights up is quite nicely as well. So I've got my uh, Radstag field dressing station, a few other bits and pieces down the side here as well, just basically the essentials, and I added a whole bunch of other scrappy looking posters on the side as well. Just give it a little bit more detail as we did on the other. Come around and have a look at this finished version of the back door. There's added a few extra bits out here. I should say, I mentioned earlier that they're trying to get staircases into this corner and sort of... Um, leave a floating one and then move the prefab up to them was a bit problematic. See, I've got all my uh, technological bits and pieces, like my collectron and my uh, weather changing device there. My power as well, seems as the, the connector is at the back here too. It works quite nicely, out of the way and out of sight. But yeah, trying to get stairs on that was a bit of a nightmare because the collision box in this corner is weird, to say the least. Um, it doesn't exactly follow the concrete base in particular. If you look at the, the step by the back door, and again also by the front door actually, there's a little step down just in front of the doors, and the collision box just follows the top edge of it as if it's not there at all. Which means if you try and put anything on the front step, it's going to float. Which is very, very annoying. And um, other than that, I think this is a pretty solid prefab. One thing I would like to see on it, that is not there, is um, basically a fire escape built onto it. Would have been really nice, so you can kind of run up to the top. It's not something we find in, well, actually, I think there's some in Atlantic City, so they could probably have used the, those assets to create something like that, which would have been nice. So that front door does come with this prefab as well. It looks quite cool. Um, I can't see myself using it a great deal outside of this, though. I think the other one that we'll see in a moment will be a bit more useful. And there we go. Lots and lots of merging later. We have a number of decorated shelves. There's a few gaps there, but I don't know. Maybe they sold some stuff. Lots of colour and uh, flavour as well, which is quite cool. I'm not sure why I felt the need to put a rock on the uh, shelf there. Oh, why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, I don't mind a few gaps really, and a few bits and pieces of weirdness going on that don't make a lot of sense, because uh, a wasteland pawn shop has to be anything you can drag back, basically, and stick a sticker on that says X number of caps, really. I do quite like it overall. Lots of containers, lots of uh, useful bits and pieces to break down, that sort of thing. And a few radios and appliances and other things for people if they happen to want to decorate their homes. At least that's the vibe. Quite like having the tea machine on the top there. It's not something I use regularly in my builds. Um, not that it's been in the game very long, but uh, it is quite a fun little thing. It looks good on the shelf. I did like my little sign there. I had to improvise using a capital J for a, uh, a comma, as there wasn't one available, but <laughs> had fun there. So to put a few bits of ammo on display in the case here, unfortunately, the number of pieces that actually look good in there are limited. So that's where the fusion core and the missile and the cannonballs there. But uh, most other things, you don't get a box of ammo, you get a single round put in there, which looks awful. So that's a bit unfortunate. I ended up going for a, a modification for... Actually, I think there's a mod for um, power armor, I think, on there, which worked out quite well. It might have been the chainsaw, was the other thing in there couple of the uh, new robot models. There's robot models floating around in the game for ages, but these ones are on the current season scoreboard, so they're much easier to place, which is really cool. I'd like to add a few little bits of detail onto the on the counter there. Here we go. I do kind of like how this divides come out. Now that I kind of readjusted things a little bit, it worked quite well. It divides the two halves off, makes it look 
improvised and scrappy and kind of leans into that post-apocalyptic vibe. Squeeze through the gap, which looks smaller than it actually is, I think. It has come out well. And in the back half here, I managed to squeeze all my crafting benches, which went, well, apart from the cooking station anyway, but, you know, we've already seen that bit. <laughs> There's the surfboards from the current scoreboard. Really not sure how I feel about that. There's not a lot of cause to have a surfboard in Appalachia, unless maybe it snows and you want to improvise, but still. Um, they're available. I thought it'd be fun to put one on the wall because I felt the, uh, the partition thing that I've got up against the wall there needed a bit of extra decoration. There is my Tinker's Bench. You know that joke that the insult bot makes about uh, New King Vault 76? Well, I used the merge glitch to create that in physical form. <laughs> and behind us we've actually got a piece of chain link and two signs, one on top of the other, to create that little bit of central fencing that I replaced. Which you'll see when the camera swings back around in a bit. Power armor station and a workbench, weapons workbench. I initially actually put the weapons workbench at 90 degrees to where it is, so it was where the the punch card machine is, but the camera kind of swung around outside of the wall and it was a bit annoying, so I decided to rotate it around. I think it looks all right that way around. Punch junk pile in the corner. This kind of concertina scissor doors type thing that I can't remember the proper name of. Sliding door is quite handy. It's really good in this spot because I needed something that didn't swing into the room in either direction, just kind of got in the way. So the sliding effect was really quite helpful here, and it looks quite nice. I quite like it. Don't know how often I use it. It's not exactly uh, keeping the draft out, but it is quite cool. I wanted to double up and put a um, a curtain on there, but I couldn't get the thing to snap at all. So I'm guessing it's a bit particular about what kind of doors it will allow to have there. But there we go. Here is our very very compact little living space, basically just a cooking space, somewhere to sleep, with uh, somewhere to put your feet up as well. Squeeze a few bits and pieces in here. Looks okay. Some tunes and some random odds and ends and stuff as well. And that sort of barricaded wall at the end there that where the doorway is. I think came together okay. All in all, I'm quite pleased with this. It's not exactly I mean it's on the edge of cozy, I think. Kind of scrappy cozy. <laughs> Doesn't quite get there, but gets close. And uh, if you're living in the wasteland, um you could do worse. And yeah. I think um, I'm quite pleased that I managed to squeeze everything in. Could have added some extra bits on the outside, maybe, and some extra structures, but I didn't have a lot of uh, budget left, maybe only quarter when I was uh, done with the decoration, so... Yeah, all, to all together, I'm quite pleased with it. And I like that I managed to squeeze a couple of little jokes in as well, which is always fun. Yeah. Lots of detail. Um, quite happy to use those sort of uh, war bonds posters and stuff like that, the propaganda posters, basically. Quite fun. I remember seeing those around in Fallout 4 and having a lot of uh, fun squeezing those into builds and stuff using mods. So I'm quite happy to have those back. And there's uh, another bunch of similar posters at the end of the current season, of which I'm working along quite nicely. So, yeah, there we go. Quite chuffed with this all in all. Wasn't sure to begin with how I felt about the building, but um, I think we've managed to make something fairly interesting out of it there. So, hope you folks enjoyed that one. If you did, please consider dropping subs and likes. I very much appreciate Notification bell as well if you want to keep up to date with all my uploads or Fallout news and so on and so forth. If you get a chance, join us for live streams as well. Of course, play Fallout 76, having a lot of fun with that. And we've got a few other games on the go at the moment as well. We're finishing up with Enshrouded and with Pacific Drive, both of which have been a lot of fun. So join us for those if you can as well. Check out the social media links, merch store and channel memberships down below as well if you want to support the channel that way. I massively appreciate it and it really helps out. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.